Okay, so uh, I've been testing two of my CPUs for a while now with the Z590 Dark, and I have to say that this is by far the easiest mainstream dark to get the CPUs to full pot temperatures with. So uh, both the CPUs can go to full pot temperatures very easily. Rocket Lake is much easier than the previous generations when it comes to LN12 clocking, so uh, we don't need to mess around with all of the different like various voltages to get there. There are just a few things I want to point out, so I thought about making like a short Z590 Dark Extreme Overclocking Tips video. So a T-Rex container, you should use the best possible container, and for easy overclocking, use the Inferno backplate, so I have it connected over here on my secondary power supply. So if I have to shut down, change parts, change the SSD to boot another operating system, the, the Inferno backplate will stay on all the time and don't have to worry about it. If you connect it, if you connect it to your main power supply, when you shut down your machine, the Inferno backplate will also shut down. So you don't want that. But anyways, so let's get going and I'll show you some, some of the tricks I uh, want to try with the CPU as well. So uh, I found out something on my oldest or the older 11900K and I want to quickly retest this 11900KF but so far this CPU didn't seem that good uh, actually a bit worse than my 11900K the first Rocket Lake CPU I've been trying but yeah so uh, I'll move on to capture card and show you the settings in the BIOS okay so let's enter the setup once again and I will just quickly load my profile straight away so multi-core and let me go through the settings very quickly so uh, I use 6.2 across all of the 8 cores on the core and 55 on the cache. The uh, cache cannot go as high as on the previous generations like common lake CPUs, so you can expect cache to max out somewhere around like between 6 and 6.4, somewhere around those lines. Now, uh, when it comes to AVX ratio offsets, you may have to use a value of 1 here if you if you occur throttling when you are running very high multi-threaded loads. So if you start, if you try to run, let's say like 6.2, 6.3, 6.4 and higher like clock speeds in Cinebench R20, what you can do is just right click the CPU-Z uh, clock speed thingy and if you see that some of the cores are throttling and it's very likely that it's going to happen, then uh, just try ratio of uh, one here and it should uh, remove the throttling issues but it's a bit weird. So uh, you only need, now uh, this is actually much easier than before, so you only need extreme voltage mode enabled, LN2 mode enabled, and you can start with weak of 1.65 to 1.7, usually for multi-core, usually for multi-core, the uh, V-core scaling stops somewhere around like 1.8 something. For single-core stuff, I could go up to like 1.95 and so on. Load line calibration use either minus 50% or even minus 75%. You need to use a tiny bit more than compared to like air or water overclocking. Max on the PWM frequency, 145 system agent and auxiliary, and uh, that's pretty much it. You don't have to touch any of the other sub voltages when uh, running this generation. So the LN2 mode has many of them already set for you, so it's actually very, very easy. The only thing that you may have to pay attention to is the core PLL. This is the uh, uh, internal PLL on Asus boards, I think. My 11900K gets a lot of issues if this is not set at the minimum value, so the default uh, 0 0.9 volts. If it's left at auto, if I set it to, let's say, like 1.1 or 1.2, I get weird hangs when I try to boot into the operating system, but with the stock value, like 0 0.9, it uh, usually works just fine. So I'm actually going to try it over here with this CPU as well. Now, uh, memory, I only use, uh, I, I just use some very basic settings for starters. So I always recommend you test the CPU individually first before you, uh, uh, before you try to increase the memory. So just start with the CPU and if you uh, find very solid like uh, overclock ranges with the CPU, you can then start to overclock the memories as well. My CPU port is at the, it's currently at minus 60, so uh, you can save and exit these settings once you hit around like uh, around minus 110 on your CPU container, 
and then you should be able to just boot straight to the operating system. But this is a lot more convenient than the previous generations, like uh, for example when we got the first like Z390 Dark, we had to mess around a lot with uh, like PLL OC voltage, VCC PLL, standby, well standby does exist over here, and that's actually the only voltage we need for full pot temperatures and good overclocking. So it will set, when you enable LM2 mode, it will set the standby voltage roughly to 1.65 on its own. So that's pretty much the only voltage we need this time. But again, core PLL you might need if your particular uh, CPU is very picky about it. You might need either the stock value or like something like 1.1, 1.2 or so on. So now I will just save and exit and let's go. Okay, so now booting the operating system. So let's see how the CPU behaves. Okay, so open CPU Z, Benchmade for the actual test. I will still try R15, although I should use R20. So 6 to 1.7 volts, 0.9 on the core PLL thingy. Let's try this. So this is the uh, thing I recommended you to try with the R20. So right clicking the clock speed if you suspect the CPU is throttling. 3198. Then we open Elite X1. Okay, so let's check. So 1.7. I'll put some cache up. 63 and 58. These are the sub voltages, so standby 1.65. PLL OC 1.6, although you uh, could even try to play with the PLL OC. You could try the minimum value or you could actually try to raise it even more if it affects the actual clock speeds, but it's quite unlikely. So I'll enable. So let's try to run. 155 at the moment. Oh, we crashed. Okay, so now I set the PLL OC to uh, minimum value. Let's see if it has any impact. I think I had some issues with uh, that voltage once on this on this generation. So one seven. I'll put just five six six three one point seven volts over there. You can see PLL OC at minimum. And also I changed the uh, uh, core PLL to 1.2 from the stock value of 0 0.9. I'll go to 160 minus and try to run the test. Yeah, this CPU is definitely not good, as you can see, it's even failing 6.3. Yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to maxing out the CPU. Let's still try. I'll put 1.55, 1.5, 1.45. I want to try higher voltage on this, just uh, for pure curiosity. And 1.2 didn't help at all. I will put the core PLL back at auto. No, absolutely no difference compared to uh, what it was like uh, compared to default. So. Uh, my last session I didn't touch it at all, now I tried both the minimum and some of the higher values and absolutely no difference. So I'll try ring PLL usually only helps with the cache. But PLL OC, I just want to try if it affects the core. Let's try one more time. Oops, wrong test. Elite X1 five six six three. Let's try, but I doubt there's any difference. It's crashing. Yeah. 
so pretty much no difference. Also, a good thing about the Z590 Dark is that it can actually post and boot at maximum temperature of LN2. So minus 193, although it's a bit dark. And we enter the BIOS, so hold on a sec. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, a lot more convenient than uh, with the previous generations. And on this CPU, I can actually uh, even do a CMOS clear and still cope boot at very close to full pot temperatures. So that's even better thing, if you ask me. So uh, yeah. Okay, let's try full pot very quickly. Okay, running the max maximum temperature of LN2, although you cannot see it. Oh, so let's put five seven, six three, and the maximum, like good, was uh, one point seven nine on the other CPU. So I'll put one point seven nine. Save that. So let's run six three first. It should pass now. Three to thirty-eight, not a good score because very quite simple memories. But I just want to show you six four. Six four passed. So I'll save this briefly and show you. So that this actually failed 6.5 in R15, and here is the uh, 11900K 6.5 passed uh, in R20 with 5A cache, but the cache can go higher around 6.2, and this was with 1.79 V core. I think that was the container, not the thermal paste. But yeah, I'll try. I'll try 6.5 again. Actually, no. I'll run 6.4 one more time with 6.1 on the cache to demonstrate for you guys. Need to get some LN2, but yeah. 3318. Yeah, so let's let's try 65, but it's going to crash. But I just want to demo for you guys. So 65, still same voltages, and we can see it move to 65. Actually, I want to open CPU Z, check how the cores look like when we run, but I think it might crash quite quickly in this test. So it just means the CPU is not very good. 65, 65, 65, 65, and we crashed. Oh well. Okay, so this is the uh, final attempt on this CPU to pass 65 in R15. Obviously not a great CPU, considering uh, many would even pass R20 at this speed and even higher. Let's see. And yeah. Didn't even start. A blue screen, but yeah. So uh, try these steps, but you are very good. You are pretty much good to go, even with just the LN2 mode. You only need V core, system agent, VCCIO, auxiliary voltage, and uh, if you get the weird hangs when the, it, when it tries to boot into operating system, usually what helps is the uh, core PLL. So. Uh, Try to try setting it at the minimum value 0.9. It has fixed both of these CPUs when they gave that issue. So uh, 
even on this CPU when I used too high VCC ST, when I used too high VCC ST, uh, it started hanging again on operating system boot, and when I set the core PLL to 0 0.9, it uh, took the problem away. So try that one. So let's try this one more thing. And yeah, a no-go. So uh, the changing or playing around with the standby voltage didn't help with the CPU. So uh, that's pretty much it. So like and subscribe if you find these tips helpful. And if you have Z5 and any dark, then consider about trying it on Sub-Zero cooling like this. And thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.